All right, so problem one, it's asking for which of the following statistics is defined as the 50th percentile. And the key um, concept they're trying to um, get at here is, is to basically just to make sure you understand the differences between measures of center. Um, the mean is, you know, the arithmetic average at all numbers up um, divided by the total number of data points. Sometimes the mean could be the 50th percentile, but it's by definition, it's not. Sometimes it could be equal to the median. The median by definition is the 50 percentile. By that, we mean the equal areas point where there's 50 percent of the area to the left and 50 percent area to the right, or 50 percent of the area is greater than or less than um, this point here in the data set. So it's maybe B. And problem two, a researcher wanted to estimate the average amount of money spent on extracurricular activities per school in the search region. The researcher randomly selected 20 public schools in the chosen region to use, for example, which of the following best describes the type of sample that was taken? Okay, so um, this is um, dealing with, well, this covers the material in chapter four in my textbook. It's usually going to Sometimes it's sometimes it's usually chapter one, but um, it's it's usually the chapter with a lot of reading, and it's um, it's, it may call it exploratory analysis. Anyways, um, the key thing that you want to recognize is is how they um picked or how did they, they distinguish their um samples. You see that the key the key factor here is that well, the twenty school here's are. The 20 schools here are private and the 20 schools in this group are public. So they basically try to create, um, uh, they, they try to account for the fact that, that um, the type of school could be a factor, you know, type of school funding. Like we could, we could say that the, the, um, that the, the fact that, one, that a school is public versus the fact that another school is private is going gonna, is gonna, to, you know, be associated with how much money they spent on extracurricular activities. So they did what we call a stratified sample, stratified random sample. So they broke, so each of these are a group of strata. So the answer would be E. Problem three, students in a large psychology class measured the time in seconds it took each of them to perform a certain task. The times were later, were later converted to minutes. If a student had a standardized score of, one, of Z equals 1.72, before the conversion, what is the standardized score for the student after the conversion? Um, well, by definition, that this is what a standardized score is. Um, the standardized score, remember, tells you, allows you to determine um, the relative position some uh, an individual is from all the other individuals. So um, we define that, you know, to be, you know, the, the Z score or the number of standard deviations away in a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. That is used by that is by definition what a standard score is. Standardized score is, or even you remember this formula. So the, by definition, the, this is these are standard deviation units: one, the two, negative one, negative two. So it's falling from the um, you know, sixty-eight, ninety-five, nine-nine, seven rule, nine-nine point seven rule, like you probably heard. So to me, the same thing. So we'll look at the answer we see. A researcher conducting a telephone survey is concerned about the possible sources of bias. Of the following, which is the best example of non-response bias? Okay, so non-response bias is usually um, is usually mixed up or you know kind of confused with. Um, being able to like being able to not reach someone. So there's a difference between some between giving someone a survey 
and them not giving me back the survey versus not even being able to reach somebody. So this is what this question is trying to get at. So um, it's not gonna be wording. Um, it's not gonna be the behavior because again, these, these have really nothing to do with the fact that the interviewer um, wasn't able to reach the person or was able to reach the person. I see is okay. That this is this is this is probably going to be another common mix of answers. D. So you look at the many people selected. Many people selected to participate in the survey, who do not respond, might have different opinions from those who do respond. And you probably, you know, have gone like text messages like please respond to this survey you know um blah 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 you, you you i if you're anything like if you're somebody like me i you probably don't care about most of those like i i don't think i ever respond to one but um if it was if it was um if it was dealing with something that you cared about if it was dealing with maybe i don't know um students getting you know longer lunch time or students getting more money for, um you probably would respond um but there's usually going to be a, a difference in opinion um, when you compare the people who respond with people who don't respond. Um, usually, when you respond to something, it's it's because you actually care about it. When you don't respond to something, it's usually you don't you don't care about it. So the answer is going to be D. This is going to be an example of non-response bias. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah. The, so the other type of um, bias that you're probably trying to confuse you with is usually called under coverage. So that's probably like something that would be like E or C. But under coverage is you can't reach the person. Like you, you weren't like you weren't able they weren't they weren't even able to have a chance to participate. So really make sure you, you study those differences because that's a commonly mixed up definition. Okay, problem five at a large Conference of teachers from a variety of subjects, a random sample of 50 mathematics teachers attending the conference was, was selected. Among the selected mathematics teachers, 28% had taken one or more courses in statistics. For which of the following populations is 28% a reasonable estimate of the percentage of those who have taken one or more courses in statistics? Okay, so. Is it going to be all mathematics teachers? It's not going to be that because they say all mathematics teachers. They, they, they're, they're literally like, you know, mathematics teachers in all over the world. And um, we can't just, we can't um, just say they're all going to be alike, this group. We can't, we can't just, um, we can't just extrapolate our results. We can't just generalize our results to every single math teacher. So we know there, there's gonna be differences between math teachers in maybe one state versus another state versus another country. So when we're dealing with um, a sampling in this method, you wanna, you know, you wanna make sure you understand the context, you wanna understand the environment. So you, so you wanna, you know, account for the fact that these teachers are attending a conference and you know, you can argue, as I would argue, um, teachers have a choice to attend a conference. There, um, um, so there could be, you know, um, a difference between the, the teachers at a conference versus the teachers who don't attend a conference. So you can only really generalize these results to all the math teachers at the conference. You can't generalize it to all math teachers, you know, anywhere. So all the so, so it's really just going to be B. Not all teachers, all math teachers. So yeah, the answer is B. Sure. 